battlefield for my Lord. Yes, I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. I promise him that I, I will serve till I die. Yes, I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Yes, I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Battlefield for my Lord. I promise him that I. How many soldiers I got in here? Yes, I'm on. I'm gonna stay on the battlefield for my Lord. I'm going to stay on the battlefield for my Lord. I promised him that I, I told him I'll serve till I die. Battlefield for my Lord. Oh, I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. For my Lord, him that I, I will serve him till I die. I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Come on, sanctified people. Yes, I'm on for my Lord. Oh. Battlefield for my Lord. I, I told him I serve him till I die. Battlefield. Come on, do I got any soldiers in here? Come on, soldiers. Oh, I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. The battlefield for my Lord. In that I, I will serve till I die. Yes, I'm on. Now, one more time for the old saints. The old saints that know this song. Yes, I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. For my Lord, oh, I promise him that I, I would serve him till I die. I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Somebody throw your hand in there and shout glory. Can you just give the Lord a sanctified praise? Come on and give my sanctified praise. Give my sanctified praise. Awful good. Sound awful good. You can't nobody praise me like saints of high people can. Can't nobody praise me like saints of high people. Thanks the Lord. I gotta praise, gotta praise, gotta praise. I gotta praise. I gotta praise, gotta praise, I gotta praise. I gotta praise, gotta praise, gotta praise, I gotta praise. Help me just for a few more minutes. I 
gotta praise, gotta praise, gotta praise. I gotta praise. Praise Him. 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 Praise in here this morning. Jesus. You know what it is. I don't know what it is. You got to praise him, Lord. But put both your hands in heaven and look towards them. Look towards heaven and tell him, I got to praise and I got to praise you, Lord. Woo! Hey, Shabbat. Tell him, I got to praise you, Lord. Shabbat. Hey. I got to praise you, Lord. For what you done for me, for how you helped me, how you healed me, how you delivered me, how you touched me, how you brought me out, how you brought me through. I gotta praise you. I gotta praise you. Thank the Lord. Glory. Glory to his name. Hallelujah. Hey. hey. Glory. Anybody feel the power of the Holy Ghost? If you feel it just a little bit, touch somebody and reach and point and tell them you got to praise the Lord. You've got to do it. You've got to do it. If not for you, for somebody else, you've got to do it. Their healing is in your praise. Their healing is in your praise. Thank the Lord. You got to do it. You got to do it. You got to do it. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. Glory to his holy name. Uh, clap your hands as we move on in this service. You don't understand the power of praise. You got to do it. When you start praising the Lord, heaven open wide open. Heaven opens wide open. And blessings start falling down. Almost like confetti falling out of the roof. Blessings come from all over the place. When you praise the Lord. And when you give Him the glory. And when you, hey, Shababasa. Hallelujah. Hey, Shababasa. Somebody got a reason to praise Him. Now, sometimes you have to push people into it. But some of you got a reason that you ought to just praise God. For no reason at all. You ought to praise him for no reason at all. Jesus. 
Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're almost through with this part. But you that got tamarines, stand on your feet and just beat them tamarines. You that got one, get up and just praise the Lord. Yeah, that's right. Put them hands together. Come on here. Come on and just praise the Lord. Just praise him. You that got one. You that got one, just put your hands up and just praise the Lord. Thank the Lord. That's right. That's right. That's right. Come on, beat it. Beat that thing. Beat that thing. Woo! Thank you, Lord. Praise him. Miriam, come out of Exodus. They said Miriam picked up a tambourine. She just gave God the glory. Just blessed the Lord and the anointing fell on all of Israel. They all start praising God. Thank you, Jesus. They all start praising the Lord. Thank the Lord. Thank you all. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank God. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. God bless you. God bless y'all. God bless y'all today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Jesus. 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 Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank the Lord. Thank God. Hallelujah. Thank the Lord.
hands, clap those hands. I know you feel all right. I know you feel all right. St. Mark, the eighth chapter, and the 22nd verse, down to about the 26th verse. Hosha, hey, glory, glory to his name. Glory, glory. Mm, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Mm, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Ah, glory, glory to your name, Jesus. Mark, the eighth chapter, 22nd verse. And he cometh to Bethadia, and they bring a blind man unto him, and he besought him to touch him. And he took the blind man by the hand and laid him out of the town, and when he had spit on his eyes, and put his hands upon him. He asked him if he saw aught. And he looked up and said, I see men as trees walking. After that, he put his hands again upon his eyes and made him look up and he was restored and saw every man clearly. Mm. Then he sent him away to his house saying, neither go into the town nor tell it to any in the town can the church say amen, amen. it is from this uh, chapter in the books of mark and this uh, that we take the lesson from and i want to use for a subject another touch i'm not going to be real long here we'll stay in within our confines another touch jesus can you look at somebody and tell them another touch Jesus, Jesus, <laughs> hallelujah, another touch. Mark the eighth chapter tells us of one of the strangest healings in the Bible. An exceptional healing. Most of the healings in the Bible are instantaneously but healing is not always instantaneously. Healing, healing like salvation can be a process. There's some that are touched immediately, but there are also some that are touched as they go. There's one scripture in the Bible and the Lord makes it very clear, they was healed as they went. Bethesda in itself was a strange place. For the Lord told the man, get out of town and don't tell nobody because the place Bethesda really means a place of unbelief. Yes, that's right, wow. <laughs> you see, so many times we tell people who don't believe what has happened to us. And they try to take from you the blessings and the glory of the Lord. Jesus. So you can't tell everything that you know. Sometimes you had to keep to yourself and praise God yourself for what he has done for you. Because I might not receive it. And by me not receiving it, it will put a damper on you receiving it. Especially when you haven't got enough faith yourself to be healed. Jesus healed the blind man. And when he healed the blind man, he said, what is it that you see? The man said, I see men walking like trees. Mm. Maybe he was in a bad place for healing, but this is a bad place. If he had been in a town of faith, he wouldn't have saw men walking like trees. Oh, I wish I could talk about the atmosphere that you're in. If you're not in the right atmosphere, Jesus, you might not be able to see what the Lord has for you to receive. When I said atmosphere, I mean if you surround yourself with people who are unbelievers. Somebody ought to clap your hands right here, right now, real quick. It, if you surround yourself with people who don't feel what it is that you feel about the Lord, 
you might not be in a place that's conducive to your healing. And I'm not talking about geography right now. I'm talking mentally. If you were people who always doubt everything about the Lord, that might not be a good place for you to be. You would think Bethesda would have been all right because at least one fourth of the apostle had come out of Bethesda. But sometimes even where the saints are, <laughs> it might not be spiritually where you got to be. Everybody that calls on the name of the Lord don't necessarily really know the Lord. Everybody that comes to the house of the Lord are not, not necessarily children of God. Hmm. And then there are many miracles that have been performed in Bethania for them to have this one situation. But I come to tell you here today that the Lord can touch again and he can turn around your particular situation. Hey, do I get a witness in here out of somebody? If you really believe it, look at somebody and say he can turn your situation around. Jesus can lay his hands on you again. He can restore you. He can restore your dream. He can restore your vision. He can restore your power. Sometimes all that you need is a second touch. Hmm. Jesus. You just need God to do what he did before to do it again. Hmm. Second touch is renewed opportunity. It's another chance. God knows how tired you are. God knows how lonely you are. He knows how confused you are. All you might need is just for God to touch you all over again. To lay his hands on you. So that you can see him in his power and his might. He said, what is it that you see? The man says, I see trees. You ain't supposed to be seeing trees. You're supposed to be seeing clearly. There's a problem when you see trees. There's a problem when you see people looking like trees. There's a problem, I don't know if it's in your cornea, your retina, or the nerve that connect your eye to the rest of you, but you ain't supposed to be seeing trees. He said, what is it that you see? He said, I see men walking like trees. You don't supposed to see men walking like trees. Trees don't walk. Trees stay put. Trees are the oldest living specimens on the face of the earth. There's trees that 4,000 years old, been there the whole time, never moved. The Lord said, what is it that you see? You don't want to see trees walking. Trees signify stability. Trees signify life. As long as there's leaves coming off of that tree, that means there's life in here somewhere. Jesus, as long as you got a little strength left, that means a life somewhere. As long as you still can move yourself around, uh, there's some life somewhere. As long as you still got a praise, there's some life somewhere. <laughs> Lord have mercy. As long as you got a little bit of power, uh, there's a life somewhere. If you see in trees, there's distorted vision. Uh, he said, what do you see? He said, I see men walking like trees. He said, well, come back because you need another touch. You need a little bit more. I come to tell you this morning, children of God, you might just need another touch. Jesus, you don't got angry. You don't got confused. You don't got frustrated. Blaming your situation on everybody else. Blaming the Lord for your allotment in life. You might need to just get another touch. How many of y'all remember when you first received the power of the Holy Ghost of God? Put your hands up really high in the air. Come on here. I remember my day, September the 5th, 1964, when I felt the Holy Ghost for the first time. Jesus. And the reason I remember it because when the Lord gets a hold of you, you almost can't forget what he's done for you. When the 
the Lord finally touches you, uh, it'll come back to you from time to time. Uh, that power of the Holy Ghost. Uh, he said, come back here, let me touch you again. Uh, nobody can touch like the Lord can. Uh, nobody can reclaim like Jesus can. Uh, nobody can restore like Jesus can. Uh, nobody can take a mistake. Uh, and turn it into correctness like Jesus can. Uh, nobody can take a sick body uh, and heal it with a touch like Jesus can. Uh, nobody can take a blind eye uh, and touch it uh, like Jesus can. Uh, nobody can pick somebody who's fallen down uh, and can't get up like Jesus can. Uh, all that you might need uh, is another touch from the Lord. Uh, clap your hands, somebody, and say yes. Another touch from the Lord. He said, come back here. Let me touch you again. Everybody don't want to be touched. But some want to be touched again. I don't know about you, but I want every touch I can get. Every time I can get it. Jesus. And I'm talking about more than just the touch of a shout and a dance. But a touch that get inside my mind. And get inside my heart. That speaks to my soul. I want to know that I know who the Lord is. I want to know the power of God for myself. I want to know that the Lord is a healer to deliver myself. I want to know that God is my God. Come back here, he said. Let me touch you again. He touched the man again. He said, now what do you see? The man said, I see clearly. When God touches you, you see clearly. When God touches you, you feel clearly. When God touches you, you touch Say yes, somebody. Another touch. Another touch. Hallelujah. That's all you need this morning. You just need another touch. You need God to do something with you in a special kind of way. Jesus, stand to your feet all over this church. The night, the day. Hey.